What's up guys? Welcome back to my Arsenal career mode on FIFA 14 and we are only six games away from the end of the season and there is the league table at the moment. So currently we are sitting on top with seven points difference and a game in hand. So we are looking pretty much extremely strong right now to finish top of this table which you could argue is a little bit unrealistic but like I've said in other episodes I have been able to focus completely on the league and uh, I think that's what's helped me here. I've been able to rotate players and not let them, you know, get too tired from having loads of games midweek and things like that. So uh, I'm very happy with that. And it's great to know that I could potentially become, you know, champions of England and be in the Champions League next season, which is great. Um, you'll see the remaining fixtures here. We just uh, obviously beat Everton 2 on the last episode. We've got West Brom and Norwich on the last two weeks of the season. We've got a game against Tottenham coming up. So what I'm planning to do, guys, is a special double upload on Wednesday so I can get another Rage to Glory out tomorrow on Tuesday. And this will be today's episode, so you can look forward to that double upload where we finish up the season. So we're going to do a little squad report here, guys. Don't forget, you can click pause on the video at any point if you want to look into each player in more detail. Otherwise, the video would be 10 minutes of scrolling through stats, which isn't very interesting. Um, now, I want to do an awards video as well for you know the Arsenal team, which, which has been my favourite player, my favourite signing, the best goal. So feel free to start leaving comments, you know, tell me which goals you think were good. And also, um, don't forget to tweet me as well. If you can find, you know, the, the actual time spot on the videos, I'll be able to then download the video and edit it to the video. So um, I would love it if you guys could help me out with that because uh, I want to make that video pretty epic. I think I've already got some of the awards in my head already. I think I know who my best player is or my favorite player this season. I know my favorite signing, all of that stuff. So it should be an interesting video. Um, but you'll notice I've got multiple players who are going towards the 30 years of age and starting to uh, decrease. They've got Arteta there who's struggling physically, but he's still keeping the majority of his technical and mental stats very nicely. Um, the problem I've got with FIFA 14 so far is it's even worse than FIFA 13. When you know players get to the age of 30 in FIFA 13, they would start to decrease. But I've been playing, you know, some random career modes just to kind of get used to the game and learn about it over the last few days to get more career mode guides out and stuff like that. And I've seen players start to decrease at 28, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I do think there are some issues with the growth in this game as well. Players are way too slow to grow. But then suddenly there's the odd player who just shoot up. Like you look at uh, Junior Melander, I think his name is, the Belgian midfielder, the central defensive midfielder. He goes up to, to 80 in his first season. He goes up by like 7 or 8. You know, it's just completely out of proportion. So it's a little bit strange. Hopefully that is something they will look at down the line. Maybe in next gen they'll be able to tune it. I don't know if it's going to be pretty much the same game or not. Probably, you know what they're like. Anyway, let's move on. We've got a game against West Ham in the rain, which we're going to go and swap out because I'm fed up with playing in the rain. It feels like I'm playing in the rain almost every single game. So I am trying to change it out, make sure there's some variation in the episodes. Um, but let me know if you get bored of just the sun. I, I obviously like playing in the sun. I've got an issue with this game as well with the... Everyone knows, right? I like to change the player's boots. I think it makes everyone feel new. Um, in this game, when it's raining or if it's night time, the boots look grey. Is it just me? Like, even the bright Nikes, you know, they, they look really dark on the pitch. Whereas when you play in the day, they really shine, you know, it looks nice. So I don't know if it's just me who's experiencing that. Um, it's a bit of OCD, I guess. I like, you know, having big, bright, shiny boots on the pitch. It just looks cool. Um, most of my strikers tend to wear, you know, yellow, white boots and stuff like that. Um, but that's just me. Let me know if you're the same, guys, because I hate it when players, you know, turn up to your club and they're wearing those red uh, Adidas boots and they look black. It's just, it's so frustrating, yeah. Come on, you've got to make them look lovely and shiny. But look at Ramsey picking out Cazorla there, who's playing as Cam while Ozil has a little rest in this match. And he's able to actually slot that one home in 30 minutes. And it's a very, very lucky finish. I tried to finesse it with his left foot to the far post. But he actually went with his right. But luckily the keeper couldn't get a hand on it. I think it's Jasko Leinen unless he has moved on or done something else in this West Ham career mode. I don't know. Uh, well, not in this West Ham career mode, but in their career mode. Um, separate in this career mode. I'm talking about career mode too much and I'm saying it too much. Um, now this bit. Now this annoys me. That is clearly onside, right? Clearly onside. I finished the goal. It's a lovely little dink. Look at this. He is onside. The ball lo like it, the ball is away from his foot when they do the little slow mo thing, and then they say, "Oh yeah, he's offside." But if you look, go if you go back, guys, you will see he was onside there. Insigne was level with the defender, and in real life, that goal would have counted. And it's very annoying because I know the game likes to you know make a player's fingernail be offside, and then that's it. 
Um, but talking of Insigne, yeah, he gets very close there with the volley. He was a little bit underpowered maybe. And I thought at this point in the match, you know, 1-0 probably isn't enough. I was actually kind of struggling to keep possession against West Ham. They got a very strong midfield. Lots of tall players, good on the ball. I thought it's time to make some substitutes. So we're going to take Gundogan off and replace him with Mikel Arteta, who I have used relatively, I, I, I want to say relatively every kind of three matches I've used Arteta. So I want to try and use him a bit more. Um, we've got Podolski out on the left and Insigne has moved out to the right and we have brought on Ozil for the last 30 minutes. Going to try and get myself that last, you know, last minute goal maybe. And who's going to produce that magic? Of course, it's Ozil. Out of any player who's going to score or assist, it would be Ozil. Mainly assist, obviously. Um, although Ozil is my second top scorer. Um, at the end of the season, I'll be showing you all the stats of the players, by the way. So all assists, all goals, all their ratings and things like that. Just a much more detailed ending to the season. More so than I've ever done before. Um, but we get very lucky there in the 90th minute. Chesney pulls off a great save. And Mertesack is just going to hammer that one out. And that is it. We win the game 1-0, guys. It's another three points. And that means, obviously, the top of the table is looking very good for us now. And now we can move into the whole game. We've got a game against Hull. And I'm going to play my full reserve team, pretty much. With just a little bit of experience there. You'll see who I decide to put on here. But there's the league table in the bottom right there. Five-point gap with a game in hand. Oh, it's fantastic. So City have been mainly my, you know, main rivals this season. They've always been in second, but they are slipping up towards the end of the season. And Man United have caught up and now they are second place. And they are a little bit closer to us than Man City. So guys, it is not over yet. We have not won the league yet. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Um... I don't know if there will be a fat lady who will sing. We'll soon find out. But there you can see the team I'm using. We're using um, an Eke there. Six foot three. He kind of plays behind the striker. More as a cam though. And look at that acceleration and sprint speed. It's a little bit strange that, isn't it? I like the fact obviously he's very strong. And he's uh, obviously that, that strong at that age as well, which is very good. So he will grow. Um, but he should be very handy behind Sonogo, who we're playing in this match. Um, we've got Vermaelen and Diaby providing that experience. And down the middle we've got... Um, We've got Monreal as left back as well. And then the rest is players like, you know, Nabri. We've got Miechi. Um, but anyway, straight from kickoff, my youngsters don't really do anything. They kind of just, like, you know, let Corrin score there. Um, Chesney, I I've got to say, positioning wise, was a little bit letting me down there. And uh, conceding in the third minute, it's not the end of the world because obviously you've got pretty much the whole game to get one back. But it's not a nice way to start a match. And here's a Neke. And look how strong he is. And that acceleration is obviously very slow. But once he's up to his full speed, he's very difficult to knock off the ball. Six foot three, nice and strong. He's very wide. Uh, well, I don't know how you can call what, what do you call it when someone... Ah, yes, strides. He has very long strides, which makes it very difficult to, to you know catch up with because his legs are so long. It's like uh, Usain Bolt when he wins those sprint races. They say partly the reason he does it is because of his stride. The fact... His, you know, one of his steps could count as one and a half of the other sprinters. It's much harder work for the others. Uh, but so no go. We get through on goal there. I try a cheeky little chip there, but it wasn't to be. Great pass from Eneke here. They were working together very well. Very similar players. Nice and tall, like I said. And Sonogo, his finishing isn't really what I'd look in for a youngster. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't have bought Sonogo myself in real life. But that's Arsene Wenger. He clearly sees something in him. But we're still 1-0 down at this point. Miechi goes on a run here. There's no chance you're going to stop Miechi once he's at full speed. Tries a little flick into the box there. Diaby picks it up. Brings it into Sonogo. He's going to turn the defence here and just smash it. Bending away into the top right corner. And that makes it one all, guys. It looks like we are going to get the point here to keep us at the top of the table. Gaining points. Although if Man United have won, obviously they are going to gain two, point, uh, two points in us if this ends in a draw. But this is Karimo, this is FIFA, where momentum is key, guys. I'm not going to complain about scripting because it's not the right word. It's momentum. All of a sudden, whole city became Barcelona. I couldn't tackle them. You could see all the rebounds were going to them. They were doing these insane passing and moving. Huddleston with a great shot there. And Bartra, for some reason, thinks he's bloody Lionel Messi. Tries to flick it over his head. And, of course, I concede in the 90th minute. Bartra... You are going to get a fine for that. <laughs> that is so bad. Really, really bad. It's actually my fault, obviously. But I, I knew I was going to concede in the 90th minute. I just felt it. They just became like an insane team. And that was it, guys. Another loss. My youngsters will have their confidence kind of hit hard there, I want to say. But it's not the end of the world. We are still at the top of the table with some, uh, some gap 
between us and United and City as well. So we're, we're looking okay, guys. You can look forward to Wednesday for that double upload of the final days of the season, the final matches and all of the details of how the season has gone down. And then the awards video. So thank you for watching. Please do like this video. And uh, if you're interested in watching my new Ultimate Team series I started yesterday, it's called Rage to Glory, where I'm upgrading players through a reward system. If you're interested in that, please do go on my channel. It's called Rage to Glory Episode 1. Um, pilot episode, it's on the channel. I'll also put a link in the description and maybe an annotation on the screen right now. Um, but it's gone down really well, so I'd appreciate it if you could watch that. There'll be one of those up tomorrow and then the double upload of Career Mode on Wednesday. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you then.